All right, so we're ready to start our actual first assignment. So our actual first assignment is the web page assets assignment. So what we're going to do for this is we're basically going to build um, just kind of like a mock web page, just something quick, just kind of like you know throwing stuff around. Um, this is a, an example of basically what we're going to create, sort of kind of um, just something I found online that looked pretty interesting and um, kind of doable within the time frame that we have. So. Um, you can look at other websites too and see if you find something that's interesting and you want to try to tackle something a bit more complex. Uh, definitely go for it. Um, try to do the follow along one first, you know, see how you like that, and then you can go from there. So, um, just going to minimize that. Uh, so, I'm going to go to uh, Photoshop. And like we talked about before, you may want to hold Control Alt and Shift and click on Photoshop so that. Um, it wipes your preferences so that you're starting at the same spot that I'm starting okay so probably for the next assignment I'll say hold control alt shift and open it up um, but for future assignments after that I'm not gonna say that so if you need to write that down jot it down make a memo of it sticky note it staple it somewhere um, you can definitely do that we're still gonna get that stupid window that pops up here saying new and open and whatever else it's kind of annoying there we go all right so we're going to start a um we're going to start a new document that's going to be the size of this okay so if this is a uh, website web page um we don't work in inches right because everyone's screen is different um that these will be displayed on and just so you can kind of see it i like to go to um common screen resolution web pages and what this does is it um, it gives you common sizes here we go uh, the current desktop resolution in use right now worldwide so basically what how many pixels across like our, our screens right now from the top left corner to the top right corner to the top left corner to the bottom left corner like how many pixels are right here that's what that's going to tell us so the biggest number is right here 1366 by 768 okay so what that means is as i start to develop a web page or website or anything like that um, i like to keep these things in mind okay uh, if i decided to make something that was enormous like 2560 pixels by 1440 on a smaller desktop it's not going to show up so I have to keep that in mind that I will do that okay I will make it at this point um, even smaller than this maybe I'll go 1200 by 600 okay just to keep it kind of uniform so in here I don't want to type in 1200 by 600 here because this is inches okay and we're not dealing with inches because we're not printing this the only people who care about inches there are people who are going to print stuff. We're not printing anything. So we are dealing with specifically just pixels. All right. So I'm going to go with 1,200 pixels by 600 pixels. Okay. Now, most websites are um, horizontally based um, as far as like your main pages, and they're kind of designed in this format because your screens are horizontally based. Um, the resolution for this doesn't matter. The only people who care about resolution are people who are printing things. Okay, so the same thing, we don't care how many pixels per inch because we're not going to print this. This is a web page. Uh, this could be 7 trillion, it doesn't matter. Um, this is going to a, um, an 8 bit image because it's going to a screen. Um, this is RGB color. The background can be white, which is fine, working RGB and square. So 1200 pixels, 600 pixels, leave that at 300, RGB 8 white working square and then let's give it a name so uh, the way you should name all of your stuff is your last name underscore what the assignment is web assets and then we hit ok alright so this is our document ok and if I just hit control minus it'll zoom me out I don't need this info up right now I don't need this up right now so I can just kind of close those um, your layers I commonly always have up. You're always going to be tweaking layers and modifying and whatever else. 
um, our white area here this is our website okay our web page that we're going to be dealing with so looking at we don't need you anymore looking at this uh, you can see there's some kind of pattern that's happening in the background um, there's this white bar here there's a title right here a little thing here and then each one of these has a kind of like their own thing now these are pretty much um, set up in a way where if we knew or if we set up one of these we could just duplicate it and just change the stuff inside it um, if we wanted to okay um, but there's some stuff in here we want to kind of plan out all right so like this obviously we can plan this and stage this we want to do every single one of these we'll do one and then copy it over um, but as far as spacing goes we want to have that set up uh, ahead of time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in what are called guides and guides allow you to kind of line things up a little bit easier in order to use guides I need rulers so view rulers right there hotkey is control R okay anytime I see a hotkey I click off and I try out the hotkey and make sure that it works okay now my ruler is up here let me zoom in a smidge. Uh, I need just a little bit more real estate. I can kind of squeeze things over. Maybe I'll take my layers. There we go. Oh, jeez. I need to dock these things and move them over too. I just want to get a little bit more room. I'm going to close this. Oh, that's move you over to here it's hard to see on my screen but there's these little dots and I'm just moving these little dots over to that side there we go all right so that'll be good enough for now all right so um, up here on the top this is our ruler and our ruler is set up in inches okay it's just the default if you right click on it though you can change it to whatever you want um, for this, we want pixels, so we change it to pixels. And I'm also going to bring up my info. So let me just go grab my info. See, it's F8, so I just click off, hit F8, and now I have info. Okay. And the neat thing is, you can just dock this in an appropriate area that way everything's kind of together. Um, let's go. I could also pull this off too. This is a common thing I'll do. I pull that off just so I can reposition where it's at there we go cool um, so I'm going to just kind of lay it out so I'm gonna click and drag you I'm gonna click and drag from inside the ruler and drag down you'll see I have a little blue guide here and if you look off to where my info is my info is actually telling me where those numbers are so uh, we went 600 pixels vertically so if I go to like a hundred pixels here Um, that gives me a nice area for a title and then switching back to this so we would have uh, maybe a little bit too big let's hold down the control key so that we can get to our arrow or command key if you're on a Mac and let's shrink this down to maybe 50 so I'm watching that info and getting that lined up there we go all right so uh, this is about 50 maybe this one is about 75 so we'll drag this, here's 50, so we'll add 75 to it, 125, that's good. And then we'll have some area for our work here, uh, that should be good there. One, two, three. All right, so we need basically four little spots here and then a little margin on the side. So I'm just gonna drag this over maybe to 50 here. Now on the other side, I'm not going to drag it to 50 because there's no 50. I'm going to drag it to 1150 because that would be an appropriate amount. So you see how we're just kind of like staging where this is going to be. Um, if we can stage it and just get it kind of lined up, um, it just makes life a little bit easier. And then we'll also do a little bit of border on the bottom too, maybe like 50 on the bottom. Okay, so all of our content will be inside here. We'll have a title there. We'll have a little banner here. And then we can start organizing stuff as we go. All right, so my first thing I want to do is just make a new layer. I never really draw on the background, and usually I just delete the background. Um, but I like to keep it white until I start getting something else in there 
um, that makes more sense. So the back of this, we'll see, actually has like a little pattern to it. Um, so we want to uh, create that pattern. Now this is not, we're not building a web page. We're just kind of like playing with the layout, playing with the look of it. Um, building a web page is a bit more involved than what we're doing here. So what I want to do is I want to fill this whole thing. So if I just um, use my hotkeys, I can hit Alt Backspace, and that will fill it with my foreground color, which is black. Or I can hit Control Backspace, and it fills it with white. Um, for this, it's not going to matter because we're going to use an effect on this. All right. So I'm going to go to my layer, and I'm going to double click. And I'm going to say um, that I want to do a pattern overlay. Okay. Now this may drive your eyes crazy for a minute. Um, but basically, this is overlaying a pattern on top of what we had. And it's actually overwriting it. So if I go to this little arrow here, I can choose a different pattern. So you can pick around and see if you like different things. You know, it's a website, so it's really, it's a background. It's not meant to be um, what we were just seeing initially. Like, I like the dots. I'm going to go with the dots, okay? If you wanted to go with something like that, you could also. Now, I can also scale this. So I want the dots to be smaller or bigger or whatever. I think that's... Like 70 seems like a good number for me. Um, I can also play with the opacity of this, okay? And so what this is going to do is it's going to cause it to mix with that background. So right now I had, um, if I look over here, I had a white background. And so as I take the opacity down, it's taking the opacity down on this, making the white background a bit more um, opaque in what we're seeing. Um, I could also play with a different mode here, and we'll get into these modes as we get along. Um, but right now it's not really going to do anything terribly different than what this is doing. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to hit OK. Now what I can do is I can take this opacity down here if I wanted to. And then I can also go to my background layer and I can just give this a color. So if I wanted to, let's say I chose kind of like that. Okay, so I chose this kind of grayish, bluish color. Now I filled the background with this grayish blue, and because this has opacity on it, we're seeing that gray blue. Okay, now if you didn't catch on what I was doing there, every time you see a word in Photoshop, you can click and drag right on that word, and it becomes a slider, which is really, really cool. Um, or you can click on here, and there's your slider. Or you can type it in. All right, so there's our background. Um, I am going to leave the background here just because of how I used the coloring from the background to help, you know, supplement that. Um, I'm going to rename my layer one, so I'm going to double click it. I'm going to call it dots underscore BG. That way I know it's dots for the background. Um, I want to add a little white bar up here. So I'm going to do a selection. So I'm just going to zoom out a touch just so I can see it better. I'm going to use my marquee, so I can hit M to get to my marquee, and I'm going to click and drag. Now, let me zoom in just a touch so you can see, uh, but Photoshop default has snapping on. So you can see as I get close to these things, it automatically snaps it right to these spots, which is amazingly helpful. If you want to turn that off for some reason, it's right here, uh, but we want to keep that on for now. And because we have guides, those guides are helping us snap to it. So if our guides are accurate, then our selection will be accurate too. So now we're going to fill this with white. Okay. Oops. So I need to make a new layer. And I'll just control backspace. Okay. That fills it with my background color. And then I can hit control D to deselect. Or you can just click outside. Either one works. Okay, so there is that area. And I could probably take the um, dots down a little bit more, like make it a little bit darker. And here's another way that I could do that. Um, if I take this down too far, the dots are basically just going to go away and we'll have that background. So what I can do is go to is that 20, go to my background color here, go to this color, and just make this darker. Okay. Now it doesn't automatically update. I have to refill it with that other color. 
okay? So because I'm dealing with something transparent on top, I may have to go even darker just to get that to be really dark. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, so now let's look at what else we have here. We have this Our Work, and then we have a little title bar over here. So um, if I drug another guide and I move it, what you're gonna see is when I get to about 600, it snaps, okay? And what this is doing is that guide is snapping um, the center horizontally. So we have 1200 pixels going across. Uh, the guide here snapped right to 600 because it knows that, hey, you probably wanna center something. So now I'm gonna go to my text tool, which is down here, but I'm just gonna hit T. And I'm going to just click right at that bar, okay? Now when I click right at that bar, um, this allows me to type stuff. So I'm gonna say Sarcona Portfolio, okay? Hard to read right now because I need to change some stuff. Um, I'm going to click and drag to highlight all of that. Uh, I'm going to change the color, so I'm gonna click up here. Every time you go to one of these, it changes this, okay? And this is its own menu for whatever you're doing with these specific items. So I'm gonna go over here to the color of this and make this white. Maybe I'll make it just kind of like a slaty blue. That. Let's just see what that looks like. Um, I also can change the font, so I can go here. Cool thing about Photoshop is as I just scroll over each one of these, it'll give me a different, it'll automatically update it. So I can see what does it look like with different fonts very quickly. So, um, that looks fine. So that works there. I could also open this. If I click on this box, it'll open up my character. What was that? It'll open up my character palette, and then I can adjust further things with this. Okay. I could also uh, click on that again and pull out the paragraph. And I like to have these two kind of buddied up and just hide this. All right. So I can center it. So it's centered, just like the example. Go back to the character one. Um, and for this, I'm gonna use what's called small caps. Okay, so the first letter is capitalized because I capitalized it. And then the other ones are all caps, but they're just shorter versions of it. And then I'll change the size of this maybe to 18. Okay, now if I wanna move it, um, I'm gonna hit the check mark or hit, there we go. Hit the uh, move tool here or hit V. And then I could just adjust where this is at. Okay. Now again, as I start to move this, you'll see it kind of link up and snap. So basically this is the center. Now it may kind of throw you off because this is, um, I mean, it doesn't look centered just because my name is like so far left and there's this big gap and then this. Um, but if you look, here is 900, right about at the end, here is 300. And so this definitely is centered. Uh, if we need to see a preview of that, you can use control um, semicolon and that'll hide your guides just so you can see what it looks like and it definitely does look like it is centered okay so Sarcona portfolio there we go and I just want to move this up in this list okay uh, we also have this little tighter title area that I should also label white title so I know what it is and let's add some more text in here. We can add the all work, web, graphics, mobile, sure. So we'll go to our text tool. Now I'm just gonna type in one of these words and then adjust it. Now I can also click and drag to create a text box and this will actually create a text box around it. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna hit escape because I actually don't wanna do that. I just wanna click and I'm just gonna type in um, uh, yeah, all work. Now, it comes in at the same font that the other one did, so I'm going to hit Control A to select it all, shrink the font down to something more appropriate, like eight. Um, I can take my all caps off, so if I go back to my character palette, turn that off. I'll make it actually just all caps, not um, small caps. 
and I'll even take this down to maybe six. Now, even though it says six is the lowest, it will go lower. You just have to type in four or something. Okay. And then I can just drag that over. And as I click on these, I can adjust other ones, okay? So I click on the Sarcona portfolio, I click back on the text. I don't need to re-highlight it. Um, it'll automatically update when I just start editing this. I'll go with 14 here, then go back to the all work and take this down to maybe three. There we go. All right, so there's all work right there. Now you'll see if I zoom in on this, um, you'll see how this is um, brighter than these other ones here, okay? When you go to a web page and you hover your mouse over a word or a link, it'll automatically get brighter. Well, that's not, um, you know, it's, it's not magic, it's just part of how it works. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna create what's called a rollover state for these. Let me zoom in. So if I go to my all work, I'm going to duplicate this, okay? So I just wanna make sure that I like the way that that's laid out. Um, I may want to oops, not do that. Just to see, just, you know, playing around with it, what happens if I do that? All work. Yeah, that works. Kind of shuffling things around. I'm not used to having everything on my screen like this. I usually have it off to the other screen. You might fit down here. There we go. Okay. So that works like that. So I'm going to go to my layer here and I'm going to duplicate this. And what I'm going to do is my copy of this, um, I'm going to put RO at the end. So this is all work RO, meaning what happens when my mouse rolls over this all work? What is it going to look like? So if I hit T, I can go back to this and I can make it brighter. Okay. So now if I go to my selection tool and just turn this on and off, you can see how it looks like it's highlighting it. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now what I can do is take these two. So I click on one, shift click the other one, and I wanna duplicate them. So I'm going to drag these two onto this new layer button, okay? Or I can just select them both, go up here, and say duplicate. All right, so if I go to duplicate layers, you'll see, um, it's like, where do you want to duplicate them to? Just right there, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So now I have these two layers right here. So I'm going to go to my selection tool, and I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to click and drag to scoot them over. Okay, so we're just going to put three words there. They have four words, we're going to put three. Uh, just because we don't want to... I like to have it lined up with the end of this. Okay. So now I have to change the words because obviously I don't want to say all work, all work. That doesn't make sense. So let's call this uh, Photoshop. Okay. Click on the other one. I'm still on the text tool. Double click it. Photoshop. Oops. Click the check mark. keep selecting the other one. So I'm just going to turn this one off. Photoshop. There we go. So now we have the same thing where we could turn that on and off. All right. Um, and then this one didn't rename. You'll see how this one has Photoshop here and this one says all work RO copy. I don't know why I did that, but I'm just going to double click and just call it Photoshop uh, RO. Probably because it had the RO in there, it didn't like that, whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna do that again. Cop grab both of these with Shift, go to here, go to Duplicate Layers, hit Okie Dokie, go to my Selection Tool by hitting V, hold Shift, drag it over. And you'll see that it has Smart Guide, so that as I do this, see how it says there's 23 pixels basically between these two things. That way it's evenly spaced. I'll adjust it after I, um, uh, shrink it down so that it's probably not going to be the same size. 
And then we'll highlight this and we'll put Illustrator. You can see it's a little bit bigger. Okay, do the little check mark. Uh, change the name here to Illustrator RO. Turn it off, turn the other one on. Check mark. There we go. Okay, let me grab both of these again. Hit V, hold Shift, drag. And yep, we just nudged over a little bit. Okay, so now we have um, all three of these evenly spaced. Now it helps to zoom into this, you know, zoom into it um, just so you can see where it's at uh, a little bit easier. I'm fine working it, you know, further away. Now the R is kind of sticking off past this thing. I don't want that. I want the R to be lined up with it. So I'm going to grab the top one, shift click the bottom one. So I move all the words, hold down shift and just drag it over. Come on. There we go. Okay, I can also use my arrow keys on my keyboard. Just kind of replace it. All right. Now, one thing I want to do too is as this line, the bottom line of this word, I want those to sit on the bottom line of that. So I'm going to drag a new guide down. <clears throat> Zoom in. I don't like the pixel grid, so I'm going to go to View, Show, Pixel Grid to turn that off. I'm just going to move this in line there. This is where you may want to turn um, snapping off because it's not snapping right to the bottom of my word. Um, the other thing I could do is maybe my word could use a little bit of adjustment too. And I'll just drop my word down onto the line. There we go. That works. And then I can grab all of my text here and just drop this down onto the line. There we go, that's cool. Um, awesome, so here's our side buttons. So what I want to do is I want to take all my side buttons and I want to put them in a group. So I'm going to go to this little box after I've selected them all, new group from layers, side buttons, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to show the website in the Photoshop um, aspect. So I'm going to turn off my Illustrator rollover and my All Work rollover. That way, my Photoshop one is the only one that's actually highlighted. And this will be a little bit more um, apparent. The background is still a little bit too bright, and so our stuff is kind of mushed in. So I'm going to go down to my dots and maybe take them down to 10%. There we go. That's better. So now Photoshop is a little bit brighter. You can still see it. All right, so now we can add this home about services, blah, 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 blah. Um, text. I'm going to just click up here. And we'll say home. Now, it's not showing anything right now um, because it's underneath my text, <clears throat> as I was typing anyway, is underneath my white title. So I need to drag this above the white title. Now I can see it. And then because this bar is up higher, these words are a little bit bigger, and these ones on this one especially are all caps. Um, so I'm going to make this maybe six. That looks good. Uh, I'm going to make it all caps. Yeah, six big is not good. Let's go with four. That looks good. Okay. So now we can move that over. Uh, maybe I'll make them bold too. So I can go to my font, and you'll see that my font doesn't have a... Um, a bold right here. If you have a bold, you can click that. So I can fake it with this. You guys, you know, it just punches it a little bit more, makes it a little bit thicker. Okay. So these are gonna have the same thing where these would have a rollover too, um, but these ones would get dimmer as we go. So they're gonna stay dark like this, and then they would dim down when you're highlighted over it. So let's duplicate home, and this will be the home roll over and I'm just going to take the color there you go put a T click on the swatch and just dim that down there we go so there's our regular button there's our rollover okay so now I can take turn that on take both of these and duplicate it. Now here's another way to duplicate it. You can keep going up here to duplicate layers, but it's 
I don't like doing that. I hardly ever do that unless I'm doing it between um, different groups or between different documents. Um, or I'll drag these down to the new layer button. But for something like this, what I do is I'm in the move tool, so I've hit V. I hold down Alt, and you can see how my arrow switches to like a black and a white arrow. And if I click and drag, it automatically duplicates it. Okay, so I can click and drag, then hold Shift, and it makes it go straight. That's what Shift is doing. And then let go. See? Super easy. So this is about our services, our timer. So we'll do the same little thing we did before. Um, our services. Uh, you can click the little check box, check box up here. There we go. Uh, I don't think I need the R services. That just seems like it's getting too long there. Let's get rid of the hour. Services, there we go. And then I'll change this services RO. Okay, same little trick. Um, I'm in the arrow tool, the move tool. I hold down Alt, click and drag, and hold down Shift. And I can scoot it over, and then I can replace that text. Alright, so then we'll change this one to um, about. Turn that off. And let's do about. Oops, my caps lock is on. I don't change anything, just the way it looks. Uh, and this is my about rollover. <clears throat> there we go. Back to that. Uh, I'm going to hit. Um, Shift click both of these. And I'm gonna hit tab just to get hide those things. Scoop it over, hit tab again, there we go. Alright. So I'm gonna use Alt, drag this over, hold shift to constrain it. And then we'll put this one as contact. Oops. Contact roll over. So now I have all four of those. Let's squish this in a little bit so it all fits. Let's see my toolbars. There we go. All right. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is take my contact and just scoot this over, holding shift. And I'm going to line it up basically to about here, right at the end of that. You can see how. This one is lined up pretty much above that. A little bit of room here. There we go. And I'm going to jump it over. So I line it up right with the edge. I'm going to hold shift and use my left arrow. And that jumps it over 10 pixels, which is pretty nice. And we'll grab the about and we'll scoot that over. And we'll find a good um, distance here. Like, it seems good like that. And then we'll go to services. I'm going to make sure I grab both of them. And then as I scoot this in, remember it should line me up right there, 34 pixels apart. Then I go to home, hold down shift, drag it over, and then eventually it'll snap me right about there. All right, so home services about contact. And remember, what we can do is I like the little dividers that it has, these little slash lines. We can just add a slash line. So I'm going to go to my text tool. I'm going to click in the middle. And I'll add a slash. And maybe I'll kind of oversize it a little bit. So maybe I'll go to like 8. Nope. I don't like it oversized that much. Thanks. Alright. 4 is good. <laughs> uh, maybe not bold though. There we go. That's good there. Okay. So I'm just zooming in so I can see it. Um, as I manipulate this, <clears throat> you know, you always want to look for where is it going to 
line up and where is it going to snap just to kind of help you. Um, there's a pink line going down the center. That means it's centerly snapped. Okay, so it's in the mid. Um, I guess about there is snapped to the, it's not snapped to the center, but it's kind of centered. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and just drag it over. Okay, now hold down Alt again. Hold down Shift. Drag it over. Alright, that looks pretty neat. Alright, so we're getting close to the end of this one. Try to put a little thing right here too, a little logo or something, just to have something in the corner. Um, I'm gonna click. We'll put MACA 1320. And we'll go to our text tool. We'll make this a bit bigger. pick a different font for this. Crayon. All right, how about get rid of that 1320, we'll just put MACA. I think I want to add something just a little bit fancy that up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to double click on the area outside of the Mako and I'm going to add a drop shadow. Okay, click on the drop shadow box, uh, take this down a bit, and then just give it a little bit of an angle. And what that does, it gives the. Oops, this is basically like a light coming in from this angle, so the shadow would be off to the side here. I said before just play with these things just to get you know a good feel for it all right that's good all right Control semicolon to hide it. Here, I like it riding right along the edge, right along that edge there. It looks neat. All right, cool. All right, so now we just need um, some sort of indicator for our um, icons here. So we need to make one of those. So if we look at this, this is the center of our page. Um, we should be able to fit two here, two here, two here, and two here. Uh, we have for our assignment list. Uh, ignoring the web bit assets that we're doing now. Photo, image, uh, 3D character, that's four. Then we have five, six, seven. Then we also have our drawing stuff and we have our tear sheet. So we have, you know, eight or nine assignments that we could put inside of here if we ever decided to take this to an actual um, finished product website. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my marquee and there's different marquee um, Things. So right now we're using a rectangle to do the top piece, but we could also switch this to elliptical. Now you'll see that this has an M hotkey and this has an M hotkey. If I'm out here and I want the elliptical and I don't want to go all the way up there, I can hit M all day long. It's not going to do anything. I have to hold down shift and hit M and then it'll start to toggle through the other options in there. Okay. It doesn't do these, which kind of sucks. I wish it would, um, but it does give you the ability to do that. All right, so now just a quick, you know, uh, overview of how how some hotkeys work with this. So clicking and dragging, it creates an ellipse, okay? So it creates a rounded object that has uh, no start and no end point to it. And it's dragging it from this corner. So where I start to click and drag, it's dragging it basically from a corner here out to there. So just like the marquee does, it drags it from one corner to another. That's what the ellipse does. It does the same thing. 
Um, now, <clears throat> if I wanted this to be a circle, a perfect circle, I would hold shift. And that gives me a perfect circle to be drug out. Okay. If I hold down alt, it drags it from the center. So instead of it dragging from the corner of the circle, it drags it from the center. If I hold down alt and shift, it drags a perfect circle from the center. Okay. Now, if you start to draw something, you're like, ooh, I like the size of it. I like the, you know, the shape of it. I just want to move it. You can hold down space and move where you're at. And this is kind of, you know, tricky to do because I'm right now holding down Alt, Shift, and Space. And then you can let go of space and then just pick up where you left off. So it is definitely nice being able to just kind of start drawing it and then move it around. Because right now what we want to do is get... Um, Kind of like a circle-y shape um, that we would be able to fit four of these in here. Keeping in mind too that we also want to have some text underneath. So let's say like that. I'm going to time it smaller like that will give us enough room. And just because I like to be kind of exact-ish, uh, I'm going to go to as close as I can get to 150. not popping right there so 151 will have to do good enough all right so there's our circle now what I want to do is we don't have any of the artwork so eventually what we're gonna do is come back to this web page assets and we're gonna load in um, all of our stuff to it okay so right now we don't have any of that stuff so we're basically just doing placeholders so I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go up to the top of this and make a new layer and we'll call this uh, placeholder image. Okay, now I drew it here. Actually, I'm gonna start the first one over here, but it doesn't matter because I can always move it around. And I'm just gonna fill it with white. So control backspace fills it with my background color. Control D deselects. And then I can hold down control or hit V and then move this wherever I want it. So I want it about here. So I'll move it to about there. Cool. Let me organize some of this other stuff real quick, just because that's going to start to bother me. So this here, this is all of our top stuff. Um, let me turn on my home one real quick, because I want my rollovers turned off. Except for on the one that we're on. So this will be my home rollover, so I'll just turn that like that. Okay. So I'm going to grab all of these things, all the items for this, and just make another group. I'm going to call this title bar buttons. Let me have that. Good. Okay. That's fine there. Um, we'll organize this a little bit better. These two I'm just going to put into another group and put title bar. There we go. Sounds good. Okay, so here's my placeholder image right here. Um, I'm going to just kind of look at different ways I could show this stuff off. So in this one, they kind of have this um, bevel emboss and a drop shadow on it. Um, so just so you can see what that looks like, I'm going to double click, go to bevel emboss, and then. Um, So you can see a chisel, so there we go. So something like that is essentially what they've done to, to this. There we go, inner bevel, chisel, hard. And then we can change the softness of that a little bit. Okay, so something like that is what they've done to get that to look the way it does. Um, I don't really care for how that looks, so I'm just not gonna use that. Uh, what I can use is a um, an inner glow. Now this isn't going to show off very good because we're on a white background. So I'm going to hit cancel. And I'm going to reselect the circle and change the color of it. Okay. So in order to reselect something that's deselected, 
I don't need to go back to this and marquee it again because it'd be hard to get it exact. But if I hold down the control key and I click right here on this screen, on this icon, it'll reselect what I've done there. Then I can go to my color and I'll choose something, let's say like that. And then I just fill it and now it's just overwritten all those pixels, okay? So pretty handy. Now I can double click this. Now I can go to inner glow and it's there. I can just take the opacity up some <clears throat> and even take the size up a bit. Uh, the choke was good. Oh, that looks nice. There we go. So now it's glowing from the center. I could pick it up in color too if I wanted to, like let's say red. I don't want red, but let's just say we want a red. Something in the yellowy, orangey area. We have like too much green here. Yeah, I think I like it from the edge better. There we go, that's cool. Then I can also add a drop shadow on top of this too. If I go to drop shadow, take the opacity up some. There you go, you can see exactly where it's at now. And I can take the spread and the size up and knock it down some. I actually just want it to look like it's just like right off of it. So it's, you know, it's a little bit difficult to see on the screen, I'm sure, but it definitely is going to make an impact in being there. All right, so now we have that. Now, you may notice that some of my stuff looks kind of pixelated, um, kind of like dotty, like this circle doesn't look perfectly smooth. Um, as you zoom in and out of things, you want to be at a consistent value. Like right now, I'm at 119. That's kind of like a weird number. Um, if I hit Control minus, it puts me right at 100. And that should give me um, smoother appearance. And this is what it's going to look like at 100%. Um, if I was to look at this on a web on someone's website, this is what it would look like right here. Okay. So um, so that's that. So let me take and add some text. And I'm just going to put in. Um, oops. I'm just going to click underneath this. And then I can shrink this down to six before I start typing. And then I will put in photography. Okay. And we don't want this crazy font. So let's go pick it up from font. Um, it saves the ones you've done up here in your document so far. So I'm going to use Lucida. And I'm going to also get rid of my caps and just leave this as regular, like whatever I typed. And that looks nice. All right, just bolt, uh, brighten the font a little bit more. Okay, so now we have photography. So imagine we duplicated this over here. We're going to have enough room for four different things in each spot. And it looks like we would um, so far. So I like that. Uh, we would need, again, a placeholder image for this. Um, so if I were to just duplicate this, just that one. I don't need anything for photography. I can leave that as is. Um, let's change this to our O. And under the effects, I can just go to um, gradient overlay. I can choose this dark one and look at the effect that we get from just this. Adding that, that gradient on top of it um, will add a really cool effect to it. So as we hover our mouse, we get that. Okay, now we're losing the blue, which I don't want to lose the blue. So what I can do is go to that gradient overlay 
And here's where we were talking about these blend modes before, okay? So instead of just simply working with opacity, okay? Basically it's the, the gradient is 100% opaque, and then as I slide it back, it's getting more transparent. Um, I can use this, and what I can do is say darken. And so what that does is it takes the color of the black here, and it'll darken the stuff underneath, okay? So whatever is black, um, basically it stays black, but whatever is lighter, it just stays lighter. So we get this nice little mix. Um, you could play with other ones too, like here's burn, which is really strong. Here's screen. Um, here's lighten. Now these are kind of mixed, like here, these have more impact in the dark areas. Here, these have impact, more impact in the light areas. Um, and then the other ones are kind of like a mix of that. Okay, and you can use the arrows to go through them to see, you know, what do you like, what don't you like. But I like that multiply. I thought that was a neat, um, a neat look to it. Okay, and we can always test it out. Okay, now you may be confused, like why are we putting a blue circle here? Um, aren't we going to put like an image or something? And we definitely are. Um, and you'll see that when we get to it, that all we have to do is replace the stuff that's inside here with an image that drops right into that spot, which is very cool. Um, and all the effects and stuff will will copy over. All right. So this is a pretty complex setup for this because we have basically three things that are going with it. Um, and actually, I think we do want to maybe let's duplicate photography too. And then we'll do a rollover on photography, and then we'll just brighten the color some. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we have these four things that are gonna go with each one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group each one of those. I'm gonna call it portfolio item. Uh, one. Now just portfolio item. I'll change the actual name to it, whatever it is at the end. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm in the move tool, hold down alt, drag this over while holding shift. All right, that should be good for now. Now watch, I can grab both of these and drag these down like so. That's pretty fancy. Now I can grab all four of these and drag these over like this while holding down Alt. Okay, I think I'm done with my info for now so I can just kind of stretch that out. And I'm going to go into each one of these. So just to save myself some sanity, I'm just going to turn on each one. So this one will be photography. Okay, that's all my photography stuff inside. This one will be whatever our next assignment is, which is image manipulation. typed it here, I didn't type it there. That's why I have to make sure I type it. Now, this is pretty big, like that's, let me turn this other one off. That's a pretty big distance here. Let me turn photography on. Okay, we're plenty good for photography, we're not bumping into it. Just to make sure we don't bump into it on the other side either. This one, uh, one, yeah, 3D textures. Oops, no, not 3D textures. Nope, nope, I want that one. There we go. So that one will be 3D textures. And just the hockey I'm using just to finish the text is just control enter. Okay, so as I type it here, if I were to hit enter, it would go down to the next line. If I hit control enter, it says good, but that's what we wanted. Okay. 
And I'm going to drag this down. As I drag it, you'll see that there is a um, box that's hovering over this area. And as I drag it between these two, then the line is between them. Okay, it's very important you don't drop it inside of one of the other ones. Uh, next one will be the caricature. And this really helps, um, you know, work on your typing too. You could also copy paste. And then this one will be our organic drawing. And watch how I just copy, just highlight all the words and hit Control C. And then when I open this up, I can just paste right over that. Paste right over that. Hide this one. Paste right over that. So much quicker, right? I always try to find ways you can speed up your workflow. And then this one will be hard surface drawing. That might be a really long one. We'll have to adjust that for sure. fits it fits per pretty good in there uh, now just so you can see what we would want to do if that didn't fit is we could just go into here and just shove it down to the next line so I just hit just uh, enter and it moves it down to the next line so I can go to that one move that down to the next line okay now it does hang off a little bit here but that's fine because websites you know they scroll so you would have uh, extra stuff there I actually like how it's laid out better with it being on the next line, uh, but I do have like an extra space in here I want to get rid of. There we go. So it wasn't perfectly centered. Cool. Oops. Make sure this has the RO on it. And then what's the next one is our product or our um, photo collage. one will be our tear sheet. Just accidentally making new ones. There we go. So there are our things. Now, um, I don't want the rollovers on each of these, so I'm just going to turn off the rollover. And Photoshop gets more complex, obviously, the more we go. Um, this is just a really good introduction because we really have only used a few tools here. We've used the text tool. Uh, we used our selection tools, our marquee selection. Now, I'm going to leave it on this photography one just because that's there. Uh, we've used guides. Um, we've used the move tool a whole lot. Uh, we'll use that constantly. Like every assignment, you're going to basically use the move tool and you use the marquee tools. Um, we haven't used the paintbrush, but we've filled stuff in here. We've organized our stuff. Uh, I'm going to take all of these now. These are all my buttons, and I'm going to put those in a group too. Okay. You want to keep this organized because it, it can get really out of hand really quick if you're not organized with any of this. Um, there we go. Now I think I want to do one more thing, which is on this background here. Okay, I'm going to just uh, double click and add an effect. I'm just okay. And then double click to add an effect. 
and I'm going to do a um, gradient overlay on it. And you can see how it jumps to the previous setting. So it's set to multiply and it's set to that. Uh, and that was what we had in the other one. Uh, I want to change this to a radial. And I want to reverse it. Okay, so you can see what the radial reverse does is right here in the center, it's really white. And then right here in the edges, it's darker. So that's what that's doing. And then I can scale this up more. One at 150. I'm going to go inside here, inside the gradient by clicking. Uh, I'm going to click here and drag this out. Let me get rid of this black. There we go. I'm going to make it darker. And then you can see I can toggle this on and off just to see like what's the difference. What does it look like with it, without it? Even when I close this, I can do the effect here too and see. And that definitely adds um, a nice depth to it. I'm going to hit control um, semicolon. So there's our portfolio. Now it's definitely not anything, you know, you go to Amazon and ask it for a job doing web page design, uh, but it's definitely cool. Um, and what we've done, especially for an actual like first Photoshop assignment. Um, and then what we're going to do is as we work throughout the semester, we're going to pop in um, each one of our images. Okay. And then if you really wanted to, you could take this and actually make it into a web page um, later on using slicing and some other um, tools. Um, but this will be good. I mean, it's, it's good enough anyway. Um, you get a lot of organizational stuff, a lot of just good background stuff inside of Photoshop for what, how to do things, uh, which is really nice. Um, our next assignment will start tackling a couple more of these. Every assignment is going to build on the previous assignment. So we definitely want to make sure that we're um, learning the tool. So if you're not comfortable with any of the stuff that we've done, you want to go through and make sure you understand them. So if you have to do this assignment two, three, four, five hundred times, um, do it. Just don't sleep for the next week and just, you know, get it done. Um, but it will definitely be worth it because the next assignment, you'll be so much more comfortable with uh, all the stuff that we've done in this one that the next one will be even easier because you already kind of know those found foundation fundamental type things. So now I'm going to save. I haven't saved this entire thing, which is horrible. And I'm going to put this into my desktop. I'm going to put this into my D drive, 1320, um, work where it should have gone, and web page assets. Okay, we're saving it as a PSD with layers. So all of these are the layers. We need to save it as a PSD so we get the layers. And then just hit OK for that. If you don't, I'll just save a copy just so you can see it. If I were to save this as a JPEG, JPEGs don't have layers. So if I tried to reopen this, all the layers are gone and all the editing abilities are gone. I can't edit any of the text because it doesn't exist anymore. As a PSD, um, I'll close it just so you can see it, and then reopen it. As a PSD, it shows me all the stuff that's in here. It shows me all the things that we just did exactly as we were working on it. We can go back and edit any of these things. So you need, 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 need to make sure that you have um, this saved as a PSD and not a JPEG or anything else. Okay, so uh, this assignment's done. So I'm going to exit it, and we can just minimize that. And I'm going to turn it in. So I'm going to go to my backup, not my backup, something else. Go to my D drive, go to 1320, go to work, go to web page assets. Here's our final one. It has the name on it. It has what it is. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my 1320 folder and then just navigate through this maze of Dropbox turn-ins until I get to web page assets and then paste it there. And so you'll see there's a little blue circle. It's hard to see, but it's there. I can make this bigger. There you go, little blue circle. And now we have a check mark. And so now this has been uploaded. Okay, that's all. That's your projects turned in. As long as you have it in there, you have a green check mark. You shared your folder with me and we verified that we're good okay so then your next step in this is um, 
to go into Canvas. And here's the 1320. I have it listed here. Uh, make it 1320. Then go to the discussion board. And then here's your web page assets. So in here, it'll say, you know, what aspects of the assignment did you find most difficult? How did you overcome the problem? What are your thoughts on the assignment? And how would you use this week's topic in another fashion or scenario? So, you know, consider each one of these points uh, and then reply to this. And then put in your own thoughts about each specific one. So one, um, let's see what I'm Difficult. Um, learning all the hotkeys. And you talk really fast. I get that a lot. And I talk fast because it's a video. So you could always slow it down, pause it, rewind it. Um, in YouTube, there is a spot where you can go to the speed and actually slow down how fast I'm talking, which is awesome. I use it um, a lot too for uh, people I watch. Um, how did you overcome the problem? I took notes, I slowed down the video, I paused and rewound. What are your thoughts about the assignment? Wonderful instructor was great. I don't really like puff, you know, just don't puff me up for this. I just, just tell me like the truth. Like what do you like about the assignment? Um, uh, good introduction to Photoshop. And four, how would you use this in another fashion? Uh, mock layouts. That's all we were doing. Just It's a mock layout. It's something where, you know, it took us, um, my recording software says an hour, uh, but usually you'd be able to do that a lot quicker if you're not having to explain everything you're doing. Um, but it's a good mock layouts for websites or uh, logos or letterheads or anything just kind of like playing around just like what do things look like in different areas and then you'd post that reply and then when you see someone else's replied then you can obviously that's mine you could reply to theirs and comment on theirs so you get um, full credit if you post one of your things and then you reply to someone else's if you'd only do one of those you don't get full credit if you um, just reply to someone, you don't get full credit. If you just post, you don't get full credit. You have to post and then reply to someone else's. Okay? Um, I'll leave that there. Um, and that's it. Your assignment's done. Then you can move on to the next um, assignment that you need to work on. All right?